Hi YouTube, this is Evie. Welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all. Today we're going to be talking about sadism. Now in my last couple of videos I talked about masochism a lot. I talked about um, masochism with somebody who is a masochist, did like a whole interview. I did a whole BDSM 101 style video about, about masochism and naturally I wanted to kind of keep going along that train of thought and talk about the companion to masochism which is sadism. And because those two things are so related, a lot of things that I talked about in those videos are very much going to be talked about in this video as well, more or less just inverted. I'm going to try not to repeat myself too much, and if you haven't already, do go and watch those videos as well because I think they are insightful regardless of if you're talking about masochism or sadism because they're very opposite but they go so well together that if you understand one, you understand the other one a lot better as well because they just play off each other so much. But I'm definitely going to go over what sadism is and types of sadism and how to deal with being a sadist and like all of that stuff. So if you're interested in any of that, please do stick around. So first things first is what is sadism? Basically, sadism is when somebody derives pleasure from another person receiving pain. It's really all there is to it. Like masochism, there are several different forms of sadism that somebody may have, and there are different degrees of sadism that a person might engage in. There's also something called sadomasochism, which is, you know, S&M, and that is when somebody has both masochistic urges and sadistic urges. That's somebody who enjoys both the giving of pain and the receiving of pain. When I was talking in my masochism video that I just did, I talked about physical masochism, emotional masochism, and mental masochism. I would definitely say when, when sadism comes into play, physical sada, sadism is the big player here. It's what people think of when they think of BDSM. They think of like dark dungeons with chains and whips and people wearing tall boots and poorly lit rooms and all of that stuff definitely definitely goes into the dialogue of being a physical sadist and it's definitely a very very big part of pretty much all BDSM scenes that I've been a part of and by BDSM scenes I don't mean physically scenes that I've done but scenes as in communities like communities of BDSM people uh physical sadism and physical masochism are definitely the big things there but it's definitely not the only thing I think it's a lot easier for people to understand physical sadism and physical masochism because you're getting into things that involve a very like tactile obvious sensation like oh it makes sense that somebody likes spanking because of the physical closeness and the adrenaline rush and all of the endorphins and how it can be so like can elicit, elicit such um, obvious physical signs of arousal and can be done over very intimate parts of one's body but it is definitely not the only thing emotional and mental sadism is going to be the other sort of half of that coin some people engage in both some people just do one or the other some people switch back and forth whatever so while in physical sadism people may be engaging in things like caning or spanking or whips or hitting somebody with a bat or chain or something like that sort of category basically anything that involves touching another person's skin with an implement or a hand or body part of some kind in a way that produces a pain sensation that's basically going to be what that is whereas emotional and mental sadism can take so many different paths it can do so many different things a really really big category especially if you're dealing um with people who are professional dominatrixes which is not a term that really gets used in the BDSM community in a non-professional sense. Uh, dominatrixes will very much specialize in emotional sadism a lot of the times, um, either just because of the size difference between a male submissive and a female um, dominant, or just because that is what a lot of male subs really enjoy, is being humiliated. Something that involves less physical pain and more being humiliated, more being degraded, made to feel worthless, uh, made to feel like you aren't big or tough or strong, um, being put in really 
mentally difficult situations, really being messed with mentally, being um, abandoned, being locked in a cage for long periods of time, playing with really intense phobias, doing a lot of fear play or mind fucks, things like that, that all goes into emotional and mental sadism. To play with it doesn't actually necessarily involve touching people at all if you're not that kind of person. Like masochism, a lot of people do think that sadism is sexual, like inherently sexual. And for a lot of people it is. A lot of people discover their sadist from a young age because they experience sexual gratification when they're thinking about or performing sadistic acts. But it is not the only way that people experience this experience sadism. It can be very much an adrenaline rush. It can make you feel very powerful. It can make you feel very in control. Um, you can even go to a place that's sort of the top equivalent of subspace, which is dom space or top space, where you feel like you're just on top of the world and you're controlling everything and you're just like huge, powerful, like very like <laughs> in control person and that can be very very powerful for a lot of people even if it doesn't involve um, anything sexual whatsoever and even if people do derive sexual pleasure from their sadism not all sadistic acts even have to be sexual for them they could get sexual pleasure out of tying somebody up and then beating them but they may never actually bring out any genitalia whatsoever just something to think about. Uh, BDSM and SNM specifically are in no way inherently sexual, in case anybody needed a reminder about that. And then the next thing I want to make sure that we cover is understanding sadism and the sort of dealing with finding out that you're a sadist or finding out if you're a sadist or not. I think it's a lot easier for people to come to terms with being a masochist because it's a lot more accepted to play sort of a victim role, as it were, in scenarios because a masochist a lot of times is seen as being selfless, they're being, you know, they're being acted upon, um, they are the victim, whereas the sadist is more like the villain. They're doing something that is proactively against what society says that people should do, especially if you happen to be um, a male identified person who has urges about um, acting on uh, female identified people because it's very confusing like do I want to abuse people am I in an abusive relationship am I gonna hurt anybody without meaning it I don't understand all of these things and uh, it's very 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 confusing and the thing to remember is is with all of BDSM, the thing that makes this okay is consent. That is the big thing. Acting with consenting parties is what makes this okay. And no matter what your kink is, no matter what it is you want to, there is at least one person on this planet, I'm sure, that would consent to doing it. So as long as you are not er having the urge to act on people who actively are not consenting, as long as you don't have the urge to actually go out and act on non-consenting parties, you're pretty much okay. And learning to come to terms with that can be very difficult, but getting involved in the BDSM community, finding like-minded people, reading resources that deal with top topping topping and sadism from a very sex positive, BDSM positive frame of mind can be so helpful because you realize that you're not alone, you're not, you know, a bad person, you are not trying to abuse people, you're really just experiencing yourself as a person in a slightly more alternative way than the larger public does and learning how to deal with that in a healthy way and learning how to find people People who are willing to participate in these acts with you is so helpful and will be so transformative. But backing up a step, how do you even know if you're a sadist? That is a bit of a difficult question because it is hard to work out, you know, am I a sadist or do I just really have bad road rage? Am I a sadist or am I an abuser? Am I a sadist or do I just have a dark sense of humor? Like, there's so many mm, little tiny things that I think are part of our culture that can be seen as sadistic, but that don't necessarily make you a sadist with a capital S. 
Um, and that is really just something you have to experiment with. Um, and there are people as well who are completely vanilla in every way, but consume huge volumes of S&M porn. So even if you like S&M porn, you may not actually be a sadist. It could just be something that you have taught yourself to enjoy for whatever reason. Not that it doesn't make you an actual sadist, I'm just saying that having a porn fantasy is different from having a real life fantasy in some cases. If you know, people are following what I'm trying to put down there. The best thing you can do, and this is again going to be a hard one, is just trying it and experimenting. Like with masochism, you really don't know until you try it. You could think that you, all you want to do is just flog a girl until she's screaming for you to stop. And likewise, you could think that you would like to be flogged until you're screaming to stop. And it could turn out that that is just one up and down stroke and that's it and you're done and you never want to pick it up again. And well, at least you tried. But some people will pick up that flogger and it'll be an instant connection to a part of them that they didn't really understand before or didn't have a word for. I think a lot of people, again, do know that they're sadists from a relatively young age, but because they don't have the vocabulary or because it's not a well understood or talked about type of fantasy or type of urge, people tend to kind of not really register what's going on and it's something that you know you will just find with time hopefully and one last thing that i do want to note here is that uh being a sadist does not make you a dominant and you do not have to be a dominant to be a sadist you could be a sadistic switch you could be a sadistic bottom you could be a sadistic slave or sub or a pet or any other number of labels they are two completely separate things you can enjoy giving pain and receiving power you can enjoy giving pain and giving power you can enjoy not giving or receiving power and enjoy pain a little bit or not at all or any of a combination of things um, being a dom or a sub and being a sadist or a masochist are Sometimes linked with each other, but not always and not in all cases and not with all people and not at all times and whatever. It's really up to you as a person and your relationships and your preferences. So just keep that in mind. You can definitely be a successful submissive if you are sadistic. You can definitely be a successful dom if you're not a sadist for that matter. Um, the two are not linked whatsoever. I just wanted to make sure that was uh, really clear. All right, that is pretty much all I wanted to cover in this video. If you guys have any comments or questions, feel free to put that down in the comment section below. If you guys don't know, I'm having a live stream here on YouTube on the 22nd at 6 p.m. Pacific time. That is 9 p.m. on the East Coast. So it'll be either an hour or two. If you're part of my Patreon, you get a chance to vote for the topic of the live stream. Any amount of pledge that you have, you will be able to vote on that. So if you're not and you want to vote about what the live stream is going to be on, please do consider going to my Patreon. Uh, link will be down below in the description. Uh, so yeah, until I see you next time, have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.